Hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Road to Glory career mode episode. And before we begin, I did say it yesterday, but there is still work going on outside my house. So I apologize if for any of this video you hear any of that. Unfortunately, it's just one of the bypasses of living on a busy, well, I wouldn't call it a busy street. But anyway, it's one of the bypass of having work done outside. So I can only apologize for that one, but I will try and make sure it doesn't get into the video too much. Today's episode of the Road to Glory is quite important because we've made ourselves through to the Champions League knockout rounds for the first time ever in the series. And we await who is going to be our draw. We showed you the group stages last time, of course. That draw should be made after we play this first game here against Chelsea. And we should know who awaits us in February for our first knockout round. Excited for that. But we've got quite a difficult period of games coming up. We've got Chelsea in this one to begin it. And if you move into January, you can see we've got a Carabao Cup semi-final against Everton coming up. We've got Everton... Three times in three weeks alongside Man City and Liverpool and then Arsenal. So, like I said, a lot of tough games going into that one. And then finally, obviously, in February, we kickstart the Champions League round of 16 off. So all that to look forward to. But first up is Chelsea at home. And after this, it's the Champions League draw. And that is the big bit. That's really all I'm waiting for. All I care, yeah. I'm not really that bothered about this result against Chelsea. Well, obviously, I still am bothered, but... Yeah, you get what I meant. I, I just want to see that draw. I want to see who we have got in our first ever knockout round, see if it's a winnable game or not. In terms of the team here, it looks like it's going to pick it pretty much itself. So without further ado, let's jump into the game against Chelsea and get this one out the way. You can see David Luiz over there, captain in the Chelsea team. For us, of course, Chris Sukasev is our captain. And I'm trying to remember, in to on top of what we did last episode, who we could have actually got. Because although I showed you it, and although I can kind of remember, I know for sure who uh, I didn't want. And uh, there was actually Nice was in there. I remember that for sure. Um, the Sporting comes to mind for some bizarre reason. I think they were a team we could pull. Obviously, well, the main one I didn't want to get was Barcelona. Not conceded a goal and won every single game in their group stage so far. So that is the main one that we wanted to avoid. And we've done that by grabbing first seed out of our group. So we don't have to worry about a game against Barca, at least in until the next round, should we get through the first round itself. So... Yeah, no, no worries with that one on the side of things there. But it's coming from Blundell Park. It is time then for Chelsea and Sukasev as well. Again, he's wearing them gloves. Chris, it's not that cold, pal. And the best defensive team in the league with the best defensive record in the league. Stats speak for themselves. Now you don't have to take my statement for it. You can look at that stat there and then realise that we are probably the best defensive team in the division. McNamee has held the most clean sheets so far. In this Premier League season. And there's a reason why. Because the, the, the team in front of him. The back four is just so, so good. Here is that lineup then. McNamee in goal. Wearing the number one shirt. Sukasev, Darfalu, Ramos and Kieran Tierney. As the back four. Peterson and Ferrari holding it down. Just in front of the back four. Into the midfield three though. McNeil, Alenia and Barbe. A line up there. With of course Tim Weyer leading the line for Grimsby Town. On the bench. Some really good things in there. Marcelo. Eggerstein's been performing as of late. Kubo as well, one of the sides who would have walked, or one of the players, sorry, that would have walked into this side last season. And I'm looking at this Chelsea team, and Kepa is in goal. Well, <laughs> he's still here, isn't he? Bustos, David Luiz, Mizaga, um, Davies, Goretzka, Jorginho, Barkley, and I think the front three will uh, have Victor Moses, Rodrigo, and Pearson. Messi on the bench, Kante on the bench, Griezmann on the bench, Chiesa on the bench. So where's Hazard gone? I could have... I, I, I didn't know that. Unless he's not a Chelsea player anymore. Could be the case. But yeah. Not the exact Chelsea team I was thinking we were going to see. So we'll see if this one pans out good or not. McNeil nearly gave it away. But he wins it back. Ferrari. McNeil gets in. We'll find Alenia in the first couple of minutes of this game. As Alenia looks through towards Peterson. He's bouncing back for Alenia. And he will have an effort which he sees go over the top of the crossbar. Kepper. Not really troubled by it. Didn't seem to worry at all when it came towards him. Just watched it go over his crossbar. And uh, we had our first shot. Just didn't quite catch it right at all. But if it's going to be anybody scoring today, as that's poor from Chelsea, you give the ball away cheaply. Alenia will pick it up and look out wide to McNeil. And if it's going to be anybody to score, I would put my money on Alenia after the performances he's been putting in as of recent. Oh, that is poor from Peterson. That pass was supposed to go inside to Weyer. And now Chelsea can actually get the chance here. And Victor Moses down under the challenge of Kieran Tierney, who's going to be booked. I mean, is it really a booking? Yes, they were kind of through. Why is Daflo all the way up here? I didn't tell him to do this. He needs to be in that box, really. Tim Weyer's going to meet the header well, though. But, um, yeah, a bit of a harsh yellow card, really, for Kieran Tierney there. Didn't feel like he made that much of a foul happen. But Moses went down and 
The referee pointed to the free kick and booked him. And now Chelsea in a bit of possession here. Edge of Grimsby's area. Chance to make something happen and they will and McNamee will save it. Not great defending from Grimsby. It's not what you've expected from the best defence in the league. And Chelsea will test it with a corner kick. Which is headed out but not dealt with yet. Chelsea throwing. Here is Alenia. Now Weyer. Grimsby not having it all their own way as of right now. As Barbe will find the ball in the box. Quarantine Barbe with a shot as well. He goes underneath Kepper. And it's 1-0 Grimsby. Barbe finishes. But Kepper will have to answer questions for Chelsea. That is not great goalkeeping from him. And I'm sure he'll tell you that himself as he comes out here. I mean, there's not a lot he can do. And when we're in this position here, Quarantine Barbe has so much time to think about what he's doing with this ball. Gets it on the left and decides to drive the shot. The outstretched left leg of Kepper. It hits him and goes underneath him in towards that back of the net. And it's Grimsby who have the lead. And as I was saying just before that, it's not been all our way. Chelsea have had a couple of moments like I showed you with the Nami save before this. And largely, that's probably the best chance Grimsby have crafted. And we took it on the first time of asking. So, yeah, it's not been all our way, but at least we're in front. We're a minute away from half-time here. Grimsby Town at the moment leading by the single goal to nil as Chris Sukasev looks to try and change that by whipping in the cross. But he's straight at Kepper. And there is a free kick given here. I was wondering what on earth had just happened. It looks like there's been a little bit of an aftermath challenge on Chris Sukasev. So we are going to get a free kick in a really, really good area. The question is, though, are we going to get on this one? As you can see, there is Quarantine Barbe here. Let's just put it into that danger area and see if we can get on it. Barbe's had a... Oh, he should have scored! He should have scored. It should have been Grimsby 2 in front. Quarantine Barbe from the near post. I sincerely hope I'm getting his name right, by the way. Because if not, you guys are going to rinse me in the comment section. Near post header over the top of the crossbar. And a big chance for Grimsby goes away. It remains 1-0 at the break. But, well, <laughs> you know what? It could have been better for Grimsby. First half fairly even. Grimsby come out on top, though. What did Chelsea do to change this in the second half then? Did they call upon their substitutes? Chiesa, you know, they've got him on the bench. They've got Griezmann on the bench. Messi on the bench as well. Are we going to see Lionel Messi on the field against Grimsby Town? That would be something, wouldn't it? Um, I will say this, though. They are also playing in the... Uh, I think they're in at least one of the competitions, Europa League or Champions League. I could be wrong, though. So they might have a few fitness issues themselves like we did and the jam-packed sort of <laughs> fixture list that we've had recently. But... We look the more lively at the minute as the second half gets underway. And we find Kieran Tierney, who's going to try and put the cross in towards the header. Shane McNeil, what a header it was off the post. Very well done from Shane McNeil, who nearly gives us the second. Leon Goretzka, look at the space now, opening up for Chelsea. Peterson chasing to try and get back. Now Chiesa's come off the bench to try and make it happen for Chelsea. Ball in, and there is the equalising goal. Seven minutes from time. Grimsby won, Chelsea won. You know what, they... They don't really deserve... To, I wouldn't say they deserve to lose the game. I know we've had chances to make it 2-0, but they've not played badly by all accounts. You know, McNamee has made a couple of good saves and on another day they'd have gone in. So I can't really fault and say that they don't deserve that goal, but it does hurt because if we'd have just taken our chances, not hit the post with McNeil's header, maybe we'd have seen this game out. I mean, there's still time, but it's Lucas Pearson. And I spoke about him being a bit of a bright spark in this second half. He certainly looked lively. And it's Chiesa off the bench to assist the goal as well. Grimsby so close to finishing this one off. And with the chances we've had, you can't help but feel we sh should get more than the draw. Even if Chelsea don't deserve to lose the game. As Kubo's going to find Quarantine Barbe inside the area again. David Luiz goes to ground and plays it off him. It's going to be a goal kick. Great defending. And that is going to be it then by the looks of this. That live from Blundell Park. It is Grimsby 1, Chelsea 1. Single point picked up here. Fair result, I would say, in the end for both teams. They'll, they'll probably accept that. We would say we probably deserve a bit more. But so will Chelsea. They'll say they don't deserve to lose the game. I and mean, we only have one shot on target in the entire 90 minutes. So from our perspective, not quite what we'd hoped. Very even on possession. Chelsea with three shots, three on target. Better guess, shot to target ratio than we had. Shot accuracy ratio, I should say. Um, so yeah, a 1-1 draw is probably a fair result there. I'll take that. And now, of course... We await the draw for the Champions League, which is the big part of today's episode. We've still got a long way to go in the Premier League, so I'm not even counting anything at this stage. We could be third, fourth, fifth, sixth, top. And I still wouldn't even say we're going to win the league or not because there's so, so long to go. And the draw has been made. I didn't get to look at it because I didn't want to spoil it for myself either, so I'm going to see it at the same time as you. The only reason I know it's been made is because the Europa League draw has just popped up on my screen, so I know that that one has been done. Therefore... I'm assuming the Champions League one is also there as well. Let's take a look then 
who awaits us. So there is the Europa League draw. Maybe we'll check that out first and see if Chelsea are in fact in there because that could be a reason why maybe they didn't start their best players if they just had a recent game. So the Europa League draw, which we are not in, Sevilla has been drawn. And uh, it doesn't look like Chelsea are in there. In fact, there's another page. Yeah, so Everton in there, Liverpool in there. Chelsea are in there against Vietes. And that's quite funny, actually, because a lot of their players go on loan to Vitesse in that one. So, yeah, it's quite interesting to see that. Atletico Madrid, remember, knocked out of our group stage in the Champions League. They go on to face AZ Alkmaar, I believe that is, in the Europa League. But forget about that, because it's time now to reveal our round of 16 Champions League draw. I said I wanted to avoid Napoli, I can remember. I said I wanted to avoid... Was it PSG were in there as well, I think? Um... So I think they were the ones mainly, and possibly was it AC or Inter? One of those Milan clubs, I think, were in there. So let's see who awaits us then as we draw for the round of 16 Champions League. Our name will be pulled out of this right here. There it is. Grimsby Town on the end of a Champions League card. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? As the draw is made, and we've got Nice. And we travel to France first. Dortmund will take on Inter. Monaco will play Barcelona. That's going to be an incredibly tough tie for Monaco. Sporting, Bayern, Red Bull, Leipzig and Milan will face off against each other. So the uh, the team that finished second in our group get a Milan team. Real Madrid, Manchester United. In fact, I think we could have actually got Real Madrid as well. I'm pretty sure they finished second in their group too. PSG have got Juventus. What a tie that is. Real Madrid, Man United and PSG Juventus uh, is an incredible one. In fact, so is Napoli and Spurs, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of incredible ties there. We've pulled Nice. So out of the ones I said I wanted, I think I said I wanted Monaco, Sporting or Nice, didn't I? And we got one of those three. So, favourable draw, but it's still not an easy one. And I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be played in February, the first leg. And we travel to France for it. We'll see how we play. I don't know what Liverpool are allowing Mane to have in his Weavix in the morning. But take a look at that. 15 goals in 16 Premier League games for Sadio Mane, which is a tremendous return. Wow. Um, but we've got a game against Palace now. Away at Selhurst Park. Difficult place to go this. But I think if we play our football the way we can... We'll get the result. I mean, the 1-1 draw against Chelsea, fair result for that one. I'm expecting the three points here against uh, Crystal Palace, but we'll see if that plays out as we jump into this one. And now we know our Champions League draw, we can relax a little bit as well. We don't have to, to fear it or anything like that. We can prepare ourselves for that Nice game. Here is Ferrari. Now Weyer. Tim Weyer has got one on the other side there towards Chris Sukasev. McNeil is still up here too, but he goes instead towards Weyer, who's not going to quite reach it. Ever so close for Tim Weyer, for him to just chip it over guy to who'd already committed himself to coming out for that. Player to watch as well has gone to Quarantine Bar Bay for Grimsby Town. Not surprising with what he's been doing recently. Player of the month as well, remember that. And he got the goal last game against Chelsea. It's Kieran Tierney towards the penalty area. Still Tierney unable to convert with a cross, but we do get a corner. And it is swung in towards the head of Sukasev. And what a save by Geiter. Straight in towards Sukasev, right where you want it. Ferrari's delivery. And uh, it is the save from the Palace goalkeeper that keeps them in the game. The delivery there again towards Sukasev again. This time, though, the header doesn't go anywhere near where we needed it to go for it to really test. Okay, we got to the half. And I think then it is probably time we start thinking about those changes. So Kubo is only the one I'm going to make right now. Alenia coming off, not for any reason other than I want the Kubo in there. To try and make something happen. We know Take Fusa's quality. He's good at dribbling. He's, he's got the ability to, to cause Palace a few problems. Whereas Eleni is a better passer of the ball, I would say. Obviously, Kubo can keep hold of it when dribbling better. So, maybe a couple of mazy runs from Kubo might break this back line. Tell you what, since Kubo's come on for Eleni, he's certainly making a difference. He's causing Palace problems. They've got to think about him whenever he's inside the box and such. As McNeil does brilliantly. Shane McNeil drives it across. Barbe with a rebound. It's a free tap in for Florentine Barbe. He scores for his second consecutive game. Grimsby take the lead at Selhurst Park. It is not great defending from Palace. Not what they want to see again. As it's just a hopeful ball really in from that right hand side from Shane McNeil as he bursts down into the byline. Deflected off the defender then off the goalkeeper. Into the path of the unmarked Barbe, who simply put, could not miss this chance. I mean, he hit it into the side netting somehow, even though he had all the game, uh, all the goal to uh, to aim at. And uh, at least he's finished it, and we do finally get that breakthrough. I want to commend though Takefusa Kubo because since he's come on, that change has worked wonders. Adding that ability to dribble at Palace and cause them problems has not allowed them to settle into this second half whatsoever. But now they find a good shot at the other end. It's blocked on the way through, and it will be McNamee's. 
Here is Rodrigo de Paul now for Palace looking to find an equaliser, which would be pretty much one of their only chances this game if they can get it. And it's good work from Robinson and de Paul, but it's put in towards the middle. It's an easy defensive header out from Peterson as Kubo will find now the pass out wide to Barbe. Flicks it on to Weyer. Barbe continues his run as Tim Weyer tries to put a bit of trickery on that one and somehow Barbe makes it work. He's in again for number two here. Clority Barbe! It's 2-0 Grimsby! And it's that man again on your screen who's got the goal. Should do it now. Should see us through. And what an episode he is having. Player of the month for a reason. I said he wasn't really standing out. How, how deep is that stand, by the way? I could see all the way up to the top end and there were still people bouncing up and down about the goal. But Barbe yet again here showing the quality. Cheap fee paid to bring him over from Germany into the Premier League. I, we believe it is Frank Ribery's regen. And that is his fourth Premier League goal of this campaign. Come on! McNeil, Peterson. Now Gwenduzi, Gwenduzi through to Weyer, Weyer. Fresh legs of Matteo, Gwenduzi might pay dividends here. Edge of the area, Gwenduzi will shoot! Not far away from the top corner, wanted a free kick there. Unless the Palace man won it with the slide tackle, that might have been why it was not given. I mean, not far away, mate. If you stuck another goal alongside that, it still wouldn't go in. What am I talking about? Still, um, kind of wanted the free kick for that, but it, just, it seemed to win the ball slightly, but he also did get Gwenduzi, so I don't know. Still, we look like we're going to win the game here, and that is enough for me. Fair play, Barve. Got us both goals. Wins us the game. Gets us the three points. We're back to winning ways, even though we drew against Chelsea earlier on. Feels good. So with Fulham up next, I've decided that I will not play this one. I'm going to be going ahead and seeing if we can beat them through the sim. We're seven points clear of uh, Liverpool in second place. So we have a little bit of point gap to play with, should we want to do these. And we've still got a strong team, one that should, in theory, get the result here. But we don't know exactly what the Fulham side is like. I mean... <laughs> He's done it again, ladies and gentlemen. He's done it again. Barbe scores again for his fifth of the season to give us the lead inside 13 minutes. I'm looking at the bottom right as well to see if Liverpool are playing. United are winning 1-0 against Newcastle. Alenia doubles our lead, which means we will go hopefully to 90 minutes with a win. Kubo picks up an injury as well, though that's not great. He came on and now four straight back off as well. Guendouzi makes it three. as He's also off the bench to score. United seem to have won. Chelsea winning as well. Arsenal winning as well. But we've got a 3 0 win against Fulham. The question is, though, what is the injury going to be to Kubo? How long is he going to be out for? I don't want it to be a long term one. He's going to be out for four weeks with a sprained ankle. It's not as bad as it could have been. So I'll count my blessings there and we'll continue forward. All right. So, turns out Spurs are now in second. They've overjumped Liverpool. And Man United have also gone to third as well. Liverpool down in fourth. So they clearly didn't get a great result last time out. We are nine points clear of Spurs, who we now face. In this one, just ahead of the January transfer window opening up. Got Bradford in the FA Cup, I think is the draw we've been given there too. So, winnable game there, so we should be able to get through that one. For this one though, we've got another available player. Of course, it is unfortunately Kubo, who is out now for like four or so weeks. But it's fine, we've got Cox that we can put onto the bench instead. And uh, I actually think we've got a good team coming along. I mean, look at these, we've got 385s now in our starting 11. McNamee, Ferrari, Antierney. And slowly getting up there is Tim Weyer on 83. Just Ramos, and then we would have an 80-rated player in every single position. But you could argue that Sergio Ramos, his experience quite, uh, counts as enough anyway. He is 36 now, but he's still playing literally every game for us. And he's improving. Well, say improving, but he's, he's, he's certainly still relevant and still important to our team, even at 36. You know, it's not like he's lost anything at all. Still, though, very happy with the team and the way it's progressing. Now we face off Spurs away at Wembley. As this one goes into seeing if Spurs can count us, well, catch us up, sorry. They need to, because then that'll put them six points behind. In fact, no, we're, we're, we're at New Wyatt Lane. We're playing over at their ground by the looks of this. Um, or, if they lose it, we'll go 12 points ahead of them. And potentially, who knows how Man United and Liverpool will finish. Because we could even go even further ahead of them too as well. But we'll just count it as it goes, game by game, and see, what's, uh, see what wakes us in this game. And Spurs' lineup is Hugo Lloris in goal. He side, De Ligt, Rekic. And Tagliafico as the back four. Kovacic, Wani Armour. And it seems like they're playing the same formation as, as well as Lucas Moura, Deli Alli and Kyungming Son. With, of course, actually it's not even Harry Kane, it's Timo Werner up front. But Werner is, of course, a good striker in this position now as well. Kane on the bench for Spurs. It's a difficult one, that. Who would you guys be starting, Kane or Werner? Because at this point, Kane's like 90 rated, 91, 92 maybe. And Werner's up there at like 88, 89 too. So it's, it's about who would you start. And I think they've gone with pace rather than Harry Kane. 
maybe to take advantage of the fact that we've got an aging Ramos, but I still think we've got enough as the back line to, uh, to keep Werner quiet today. Whether or not that pays off, we'll, we'll, we'll either be embarrassed after saying that or not. We are underway, and so far the results have kind of gone our way so far. We've got Chelsea 1-1 draw, happy with that. Into the win against Palace, into the win against Fulham. So much so that you could argue a defeat wouldn't actually be that bad for us here. But of course, we'll still look to try and win the game, as that is what we do going into every single game we play. But Spurs looking on the front foot inside the first couple of minutes. The ball in from Ali is straight out of play, and we will get a goal kick. Chris Sukasev wins the header. We find McNeil, who finds Alenia, who finds Ferrari. Valbe on the left-hand side. Has he impressed you so far in today's episode? And is he going to do it again? Not quite with that touch, as he side puts it in a touch with relative ease there. And it's looking okay so far for Grimsby, who've not been in this position yet. This is the first time we've been able to, to get out of our half, really, and, and make something happen. Are we going to be able to do that, though, is the question. Ferrari finding the ball at his feet. Now towards Barbe. Tierney giving the overlapping run. Clorentine Barbe looks for him. He goes all the way through for Kieran Tierney to strike it instead. And he's at the post. That could have been the 1-0 that Grimsby were looking for. Kieran Tierney so, so close to giving us the lead. We are approaching half time, and other than the Kieran Tierney chance, there's not a lot to show you. Spurs nil, Grimsby nil at half time. Like I said, Kieran Tierney having the best chance of the half. First 20 minutes, Spurs dominated, but we grew into the game and we got in it in the, uh, in the last portion of that half. I'm hoping that we'll continue that way in the second. United 1 1 with Chelsea at the moment, so they're dropping points. Liverpool don't look like they're playing, so we don't know if they're winning in that other game. Maybe they played before. Or uh, maybe they play the day after. I don't know. But at least we can see Man United and they're currently drawing. So this result here will keep it as it is at the top of the table. And let's just put it this way. I don't even think Werner's done really anything in this game. So I'm expecting potentially to see Harry Kane coming on in the near future. As I say this, I sincerely hope he does not go on to score. As soon as I said he hasn't done anything. Deli Ali trying to flick it up and make something spectacular happen. It's going to take a lot more than that to beat uh, McNamee. As Kieran Tierney will carry forward and find Barbe. Now Weyer. Poor first touch from Tim Weyer, but he's lucky to still have the ball. Kieran Tierney will get it back under control as well for Grimsby Town as he now drives at Spurs. Still going, Kieran Tierney. And onto the left foot. No, couldn't get the shot away. You saw what he was intending to do, though. Kieran Tierney drove a long way, just couldn't shoot. Hold on a second, because Elaine sees the run of Shane McNeil, who is in behind and gets the shot away, but he can't finish. Tagliafico put him off ever so slightly by getting back on the right side. And Lloris didn't commit himself by coming out. I was going to chip it over him, but he didn't come out. So I had to take the shot on and I second-guessed it. And Harry Winks comes on for Waniyama as there's still about 28 or so minutes to go here. And no changes yet for Grimsby. But I could make one or two, actually. Try and change the dynamic. Harry Kane still yet to make his way onto the field of play. Well, and it's still Werner out there. And here comes Harry Kane. Just like I said, Werner off, Kane on. And is that the change that's going to install some attacking intent in Spurs? McNeil stays on his feet and the free kick is given by the referee, even though we still had the ball and he could have played advantage. I think we're going to make a couple of changes here with 12 minutes to go and see if we can find this winning goal. On the inside towards Janssen, finds Ferrari. Ferrari gets the ball under control, got Barbe in front of him and still Ferrari. He's kept it very well here, but he can't find a pass yet. Peterson will find it through to Eggerstein and that could have been the moment. Lloris makes himself very, very big and stops us scoring the goal that could well have been the winner as Eggerstein would have loved to have come off the bench and got it. Free kick given against Ferrari for not a lot there, really, referee, but he's given it nonetheless. We have to respect that decision. Four or so minutes left and Spurs searching for a goal and they will get it. No! I think it's Harry Kane as well. What was I saying? I can't believe it. Outrageous. Oh, we don't deserve that. We do not deserve that. Spurs have not been good enough to get that goal and they've got it. Whereas I felt earlier on that the 1-1 was fair with Chelsea, this one hurts. Harry Kane has rose in the box and he's got his header on target. It's Chris Sukasev against him. McNamee can't get near it, in off the post. And just as Eggerstein has a big chance to give us the win, we may have just lost the game. Through one moment of it. And I tell you what, like I said, don't feel that Spurs deserve it. As Cox going to carry it and look towards Eggerstein again. Inside the penalty area. Max, uh, sorry, Johannes Eggerstein tries to drive it across. And it's not going to be there. And that should do it. Then Spurs clear their lines. And unbelievably, the change that I said that may install some attacking intent into Spurs has worked out. And they look like they've got their winner 
as it's come towards Barbe. Looking out wide to Eggerstein again. Ball under control for Johannes Eggerstein. He gets one more opportunity to swing the cross in. And it's gone again and Spurs will in this game. I can't believe we lost it to that. Spurs won, Grimsby nil. And we fall to a defeat here. And like I said, not a lot happening in the game. You can see not a great game by all accounts. No team deserved to lose it, but we specifically didn't either. It hurts. And we have been drawn at home as well for the game against Bradford. So it will most likely be a sim next time out. But for now, guys, that is going to be the end of today's Road to Glory episode. Thank you all for watching. If you have enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated as always. We found out how you're right. Champions League draw, sorry, today. We know we've got a game against Everton as well. The double leg header in the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup awaiting us. Disappointing to lose that game in the last couple of minutes to Spurs, but it is the way it pans out sometimes in the world of football. And I did mention Harry Kane. We know the quality he's got. He came off the bench and got the winner. As you can see, the league table then six points ahead of Spurs who win that game and claw back the gap. United down there as well. Nine points behind Liverpool, just behind them with 10 away from us as we approach the halfway stage of the Premier League then. 19 games in, 14 wins, two defeats, three draws. We've got a couple of cup games coming up now, so maybe a little bit of a break away from Premier League action for now. But I'll see you all for that in the next episode. If you're on around here like we see, hit that subscribe button, hit notification bell as well to be notified whenever new videos go live. And I will see you all again very soon with the next episode of this career mode. Make sure you are ready for it. Semi-final of the Carabao Cup in the next episode. Looking forward to it, guys. UEFA Team of the Year, just before we go, midfielder shortlist. Have a look at who has just been shortlisted for that. Can you believe it, ladies and gentlemen? Take Fusakubo may make it into the team of the year. And even though we've played something crazy like 75 episodes of career mode, I'm not sure I've had a player make it into the team of the year yet, but that could be our first. Take Fusakubo. They're predicting that it'll be him, Caballos, Mbappe and Neymar to get in this. We'll wait and see for the next episode. How about that? Until then, though, guys, see you all again soon. Adios.